Hi, everybody. I am currently trying to find the name of the narrator for the new Fire and Blood series. Uh, so I can tell Claire who it is. It is uh, Simon Vance. Oh, it's a very familiar name, but I didn't recognize him when I looked him up. But he's a very, apparently he's like a really famous British um, audiobook narrator. He's fantastic. I he's really, good. really liked him. I thought, I, lo I like George, uh, uh, Roy Detrees. So I have a bit yeah. of a soft spot for him, but it, it is a little <laughs> bit irritating. Um, yeah. <laughs> and some of, the, some of the accents, but this guy, I really, really liked him. I really liked him. Um, well, hopefully you can do wins and, and dance as well. Yeah. Sorry, guys, we started mid-conversation. Um, I was talking about Fire and Blood, yes. and um, I finished it because I I started reading it as soon as I got it on Tuesday. And then I was like, I, I can't, like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to listen to today in the morning like I usually would, like BBC Four, <laughs> go to school. It's like, I'm going to have to listen to this. So Ivan was like, well, I'm not going to read it. So if you get the audiobook, we can share it on the family library. So I listened to it. So good. You're absolutely insane, woman. I don't, you must have had like marathons of six, seven hours at a time. I had loads of marking to do as well. And I like listening to chat while I'm marking because it gets very repetitive. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and I just had loads of like boring admin stuff to do this week. Um, and then uh, Friday evening and Saturday. No, when did I finish it? Thursday? When did I finish it? Friday? Oh no! I listened to something else. I, I started listening to the World Book on Saturday. On Saturday, actually. <laughs> so you read it in three days. Yeah. Jesus. Right. Okay. I I listened to it. It's not. It's not the same. I've read the first three chapters, and it's interesting. I don't know. I I, do, I, I don't know where it's going, but I like the. <clears throat> excuse me. My throat's really bad at the moment. The only thing I can say at this stage, after reading the first three chapters, is. And this isn't spoilery if you've not read it. Um, I like the fact that it delves deeper into the female characters a lot more. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, if that if that's the, goes through the rest of the book, I'll be really happy with that. I um, I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, I hope the fucking Targaryens don't win because they're all crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that's what this book yeah. has taught me. Right. They're all crazy yeah, um, yeah. Uh, i i want a similar history for stark uh because there's a Stark character coming up who's amazing i want more of him okay. um, but in general I, I i liked it i really really yeah. liked it i yeah. just want the second one now as soon as, as typical of george or martin as soon as you finish it you want the next yeah oh, oh I, I wasn't ready yet to be finished so it's, it's going to be a two-part thing is it uh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Uh it only takes you up to just before the Blackfire Rebellion, I think. Is it? Oh really? It's I don't even think they get us that far. I I can't I can't remember now because I've I've also started listening to the world, so now I'm getting confused. So there's but, a lot um, of there'll be a lot of Mago Mago and Jaharis. Loads of Jaharis and Viserys. A oh, lot right. Okay. Two. Yeah. Yeah. A lot more for Viserys than I was expecting, actually. <laughs> I know very little about the first. Viserys, yeah, so Jaser Jaharis is uh -huh. amazing. I did yeah. not know as much as I did. I forgot stuff as well from the World Book, but then I was talking to Gem on Secrets of the Citadel. She was asking what people thought about it on Facebook. I uh -huh. said my biggest problem with this book is that I need an index because you yes. get so many names thrown at you. Yeah. And they're so bloody unoriginal, name of their kids, these targs. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what, would it would it the odd Dennis or Peter hurt? <laughs> Do they all need to be Aegon? <laughs> it's like, Jesus, I can't do it. They're so funny. Peter Targaryen. I like the sound of that, yeah. <laughs> Bernard Targaryen. <laughs> 
in accounts. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I can say hi to that. Uh, Reese, how are you? You were definitely first. Thank you so much for being here. Sunny here all the way from Florida. And of course, Connie, thank you so much. Uh, Sunny is very excited because we have got this week Northern Conspiracies and Dornish Master Plan up at the wazoo for yeah. sure. We're yeah. reading today or discussing today from the Prince of Winterfell all the way to Turncloak. So it's a nice Theon sandwich. And I think we can certainly say Theon now rather than Reek. And um, next week mm -hmm. it's the King's Prize. So Asha, more grey joy, joy. Um, uh, to the ghost of Winterfell, so another grey joy sandwich of sorts. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we were both wrong about the watcher. <laughs> yes, we were both completely wrong about that. I I couldn't believe it actually. Two two Theon chapters, uh, and also you couldn't get any further from who we were. Who did we think we thought? I thought the watcher was uh, Blood Raven. You thought it could be... I thought it was Victorian. <laughs> I don't know Considering why. It's, what's funny is we've both read these books <laughs> several times before I in the past. I haven't read Dance in ages. Uh, yeah, it's been a few years, ages. actually. Yeah, it's and been also, a few years. I have a terrible memory, so <laughs> I have a dreadful memory. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, we, but it was it's Ario Hota. I think it's the only Ario Hota chapter in this book. By the way, I didn't yeah. realize I because I, I set up all the live streams. All of you got spammed in your sub feed this week with my live <laughs> streams. Um, I didn't realize last week was our last brand chapter. Uh, I didn't, but now you've just said that, it does make sense. And it now, uh, it yeah. does make sense, yeah. But I never, it never dawned on me that oh, there's no brand. It's been. I it's think it's coming up to eight years since the brand chapter. Yes, the, but there's, the, yeah, that's true. But I think there are um, there are kind of references or allusions to Bran being around somewhere in certain yes. scenes. Um, mm -hmm. Theon and John chapters, yeah. particularly, um, and potentially yeah. an Asha chapter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I Who think it, so. in wins? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah so it's it, going to be around. It, is there an Asha Winds chapter? Or is it a Theon chapter? It's a Theon chapter. Oh, okay. So, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 With Stannis, though, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we might talk about Dune Winds, maybe. Yeah. Discussion. Um, yeah. But uh, also, other news this week, it is looking like we're going to have Game of Thrones on the 28th of April which is good news. So House Polished mm. back in force. Yeah. I'm not sure how it's going to work out for me because it's, I can't watch it live here. So I usually have to watch it a few hours. Like I usually watch it before I go to what, work. What day is that? 28th? Is that like a Sunday? Sunday, yeah. We usually, we usually watch it here anyway on the Monday. Oh, right, okay. But I I'm think, sure we, we did do. we do our streams on oh, Thursdays? Or it was during the summer, so it was all, it was really weird. We yeah, it was, in the, it was during the week. It was. It wasn't like immediate, it wasn't immediately after the episode. It was a couple of days later, I'm sure it was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, it definitely was. Yeah. It's just in terms of avoiding spoilers, I don't know how my life's going to be. Yeah, that's true. It's going to be, yeah. Because even with Fire and Blood this week, instantly loads of stuff online instantly yeah and uh, we've had this discussion before about what it's going to be like with wins fire and blood is not wins wins is just it's going to be crazy it's going to be ridiculous i think actually kyle is in about seven minutes starting a live stream on like a chapter breakdown so it's mm -hmm. it's it's, it's, it's not, not that i want everybody to leave here um but uh yeah people are going delving into it in depth which makes me feel as though i need to cram it in completely i've not i'm not taking any notes yeah. or anything i'm just reading it and then yeah. i will go back and reread it the way I that just, we're doing yeah. i don't know i don't want to have to i will probably do it with wins i'll definitely do it with wins um but yeah like i i know uh gemma and robert and LML and Quinn, they've all had videos out this week on full book reviews. Oh my God. 
it's crazy i just like it's crazy i do, i like i i read it and listened to it but i wouldn't feel confident enough i was texting johnny last night saying i kind of i was in like half a mood last night i was here on my own to just go live and do my 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 f initial thoughts on the book but uh -huh. i was like i just don't feel confident to do that without spending ages doing notes so yeah. i don't know how they did it but they did they got has johnny read it as well um, I think so. Yes, he was on. Well, he must have done because yeah. he was on what he was on Gemma's That's live right. stream the other day, which I watched about thirty seconds of it and then thought I oh, didn't I watch it. Yeah, I didn't. I hadn't even it. bought the book at that point. I didn't pick the book up until Friday. Oh, By the way, can we just say the UK Europe cover is definitely winning over the American one? Yeah, I haven't seen the the American one. The That's... American one is red with a Targaryen flag burning. This is just, I think this is beautiful. These ones are I had a choice. Oh, I had a you? choice in, in the shop here and I had already ordered it and they left by this one. It's more expensive than the American one, but the American <laughs> one isn't nearly as nice. So there you go. We're, we're, we got something. We're winning something. In case you're wondering, I've read the first three chapters <laughs> <laughs> since Friday. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. The illustrations are beautiful. Yes, they are. Illustrations yeah. are beautiful. Yeah. But there's definitely a few chapters I'd love to talk to you about when you get into them. Ooh, but, okay. uh, hello, Bran, how are you? Bran is on page 12. Good for you, Bran. <laughs> <laughs> Bran's soaking it in. Bran is probably messing with all of your theories or maybe confirming them. But anyway, yeah. let's, uh, let's talk dance with dragons such a great week i loved this week by the way i have my my um chapters my notes for the first chapter on my phone so i'm not texting anybody i'm just looking at my phone okay for notes. Um, so oh gosh it's it's hard to talk about these theon chapters separately but i suppose if we do the manderly stuff here and the dustin stuff later maybe the dustin barbary stuff later mm. um in terms of what her her game is um but yeah i mean i'm not sure where do you want to start will we start well, from the beginning with the wedding yeah this is the chapter where aria fate aria jane pool marries ramsey so it's northern weddings very quick and simple so there's a little bit of pomp and ceremony and the atmosphere is very you know is very winter gray it gray and ghostly and mm -hmm. cold absolutely <laughs> everywhere um and almost to the point where i don't know i mean i suppose if you if you summon by your liege lord then you just you kind of have to make some sort of an appearance but um the weather's getting really bad and and it th th there's a lot of stuff in this chapter that kind of links to the other chapter so there'll be a little bit of skipping around but um it just makes you wonder like oh my god the last thing you want to do is be holed up in in like another castle out in the middle of bloody nowhere nowhere near where you live or where you were so i kind of it's the only time that i've very faintly felt sorry for the phrase who it's described in the next chapter as being like clearly don't like the snow don't like just the prospect of being holed up somewhere where you just know that there's no escape with an absolute lunatic like well either of them the boltons roos or ramsey so it's a, already just the atmosphere immediately in winterfell sets a perfect scene for some horror chapters coming up um and particularly next week we've got the ghost of winterfell so these two chapters this this week are, are kind of leading up to what is a, a, an absolutely like unbelievable horror chapter it's, it's one of my favorite actually ghost in winterfell but yeah I, it's i love these chapters chilling. at winterfell yeah. i absolutely yeah. because you miss i've missed winterfell i didn't realize i missed winterfell until i because we haven't been here since clash storm clash right yeah it must yeah. be clash yeah yeah so i i really did miss it and uh and i think just having theon wander through those castle through the castle and really soak it in and soak the magnitude in of what he he's done here and what yeah. he actually wanted and what why he did it and just this the this journey between especially these two chapters to that self-awareness to realizing I wanted to be Theon Stark. 
Mm. That's where all of this came from. And uh, Davos Fingers, one of my favorite podcasts, I can't remember. I always get them mixed up. I, I know one of the guys there said that the thing about this chapter in particular is just the grayness in this chapter. Yeah. And it's like the grayness is permeating through the chapter because it's it's almost reflects the gray of the stark permeating through Theon. Mm. It's like his starkness. Mm. This is what he wanted. Yeah. And he's getting more closer back to the Theon he was without all the nonsense, without all the bullshit. Um, yeah. But it I is really it like is, that idea. It is almost like it always has kind of felt a little bit like a a, a, a character on its own, Winterfell. Um, to the point where, do you remember when, way back when we were talking about Bran and Hodor and, and the crew that we were hiding out in the crypts and how Bran seemed to be kind of walking Winterfell almost. He was like flying over the parapets and, and being able to have this sort of aerial view of Winterfell. And it's like, what are you what are you actually skin check? What is the for you to skin change into in that situation apart from Winterfell itself? So it and it you know, there's something, I mean, it's described, I think, in, is it in this chapter or the next one, about how they're trying to cover up the damage that they've done. You know, they'll be hiding things. They've, they've rebuilt the stables where um, that horrible scene when uh, the sack of Winterfell, where the Prince of Winterfell, and you can see Theon turning and he sees, uh, I can't remember what he called, did he call him Stranger or Smiler? His horse, Smiler, just going up in flames in the so it like when they were talking about rebuilding the stables, like much bigger and better, and it's like Theon's been there through all of that. He remembers yeah, what it was like previously, and it's like it's like they're doing some sort of cosmetic surgery, but you can't like the and the even the gods are trying to kind of wash it all away by just covering it in snow. The damage that's been done just cover it up and it'll you know well it, it's very kind of white it's, hair. it's funny you mentioned that because i didn't write it down but it, in this chapter we also learned that all the squatters that were in winterfell that mm. had uh, uh, built their nests as theon says in winterfell the boltons yeah. came along and made them put them to work rebuilding winterfell mm. as best they could and then hung them all yeah yeah, and just, Theon just thinks, it. well, he did show them mercy and fairness. He didn't flay them before he hung them. Now he did show them mercy. I'm like, going, oh my yeah, god, yeah. that's. Yeah. Th yeah. I started because of fire and blood. I started thinking that's Magor the cruel, almost yeah. right. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, kill yeah. all the workers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it it's very very atmospheric in this chapter and then you get really like elements of real gruesome shit like the fray pies um well, and, yeah. uh, well, uh, which is awful but also i mean what's really awful is that lord that 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 lord mandley is wolfing them down and it's just well, it's just something really horrible about all of it is it does that mean he's cursed now just you know I, yeah so well before we get to fray pie um I, I want to talk about jane jane pool jesus yeah. christ yeah. one of the sorriest characters in the entire series mm -hmm. uh and especially at the end of this chapter but even at the beginning um theon describes her as a corpse he describes yeah. her as being no one sitting mm -hmm. at a table mm -hmm. um there's a uh, references to mercy in this chapter yeah uh clearly he thinks a lot about aria but yeah. he wants to look after jane for jane's own sake um yeah. but he's also thinking a lot about aria and how her gray eyes are not there yeah and i i it, i've I, be, I believe theon and aria's fate they're fated to come back together mm -hmm. um I, I think Arya may end up giving the gift of mercy to Theon. Yeah. Uh, the gift of death, because that's what he looks for, especially in the next chapter, the Turncloak chapter. Um, but at the same time, just what you said there about Bran warging Winterfell, yeah. something just went off in my head. Would Theon be 
uh, an open kind of Receptive. would he be open to being warged by Bran because he so badly wants to be a Stark? Yes, I think so. Yeah. That would be fascinating yeah. Yeah. if that happened. And I wonder is that what Bran is like obviously it's, it works that Theon is there and he can communicate with Theon, but Yeah, there's a connection. That would be really, really interesting if that mm -hmm. happened. Um but I still think there will be a connection there with the real Arya as well with Theon. Theon, we spent so much time with Theon, I don't think um I don't think it's going to be he he's gonna be crucial in the end game. But it's funny because um that was another thing that Davos Fingers were talking about, that um that there was a 13 year wait between the last Theon chapter in Clash and the next Theon chapter in Dance. Oh wow. It's one of the longest waits for a character POV. Oh that is a long time. Wow. Yeah. When you think about it, like Clash came out in the nineties and then yeah. Dance came out and Yeah, so Wow, yeah. So I he's I I love Theon chapters. I love them. Yes. I love yeah, them. Yeah. I love them. Like, I, so yeah, are I you know. are you suggesting then that Arya uh takes Jane's face and I Arya, still think fake Arya, Arya becomes Arya? That I think that would could happen. I do. <clears throat> I also have a, my mad, super thin tinfoil theory mm. that maybe she'll take old Nan if the old Nan is still alive at the Dreadfort. Um, mm. But I'm not sure. I, I, Jane makes more sense, maybe. Mm. I think Arya. I think Arya is going to get into Winterfell using somebody else's face. Well, he's, you know, I want my bride back. I want my reek back. So, you know, it's it, it, there's, there's definitely potential there. I feel like Arya thinks, Arya and Bran think about old Nan a lot. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe even Arya more than anyone else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I don't know, that we don't know what we We know she was at the Dreadfort. For all we know, she could be at Winterfell right now, old man. We don't know where she is right now. Possibly. Could be. I mean, the, uh, yeah, she, we don't know whether she's at the Dreadfall or or whether, I, do, I don't know whether we'll see her again or not. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, um, so, yeah, so we have, um, he thinks about uh, giving away Jane and he thinks about being a Stark at last. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he wondered he's often wondered what it would like to be to have a home which that's when your heart breaks for theon right because this has he has been a homeless kid you yes know? yeah this he he wasn't a ward a ward is a hostage as they say yeah and he didn't feel like he had a home he never felt like he had a home in on the iron islands either and mm. this is what happens you know right this is what happens when you're left homeless it's it. He's never the, the 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 sense of belonging that Theon has is more strong for Winterfell than it is for the Iron Islands. I think. I think he feels that he should be Ironborn and recognise that that. I don't know. There's there's a lot of reference to himself almost in the third person where it's like you know. That was Theon, though he was Ironborn, he was brave, and it was like, was was he ever really though? There was lots of bravado mm -hmm. and and joking around, and so you know there was the bit the bit where he talks about uh, Ramsay didn't like my smile, so he knocked my teeth out, so that you know I've changed his smile, um, and you can kind of imagine a few chapters, a few books back. You know when he was on the 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 boat on the way to the Iron Islands, sent by Rob to kind of bring his father into the into the fold on the on the Northmen side, and he was like raping the the or taking whenever he wanted the the captain's daughter and just being an absolute shithead. I would have laughed at someone knocking his teeth in because of his like ridiculous smile and his swagger and he's just stupid teenage kind of you know bravado but he's a, he's damaged goods he's definitely damaged goods but he um 
he also thinks about re he must think about redemption he thinks about dying a hero he thinks about but but i mean to who, who would it who, yeah would it really matter has the damage been not been done i mean that the they talked about changing his story into a song and yes. he's just like he just didn't he didn't want to like that's just not going to happen basically that it's never ever ever going to be we we will cheer for the iron man uh you know ironborn uh who managed to take winterfell with six men or whatever it, it's just like that that won't go down in history as much as him being a turncloak and a and reek yeah it's, so it's yeah it's it's interesting because um i feel like with with theon it's probably a good thing that we didn't have a theon pov in a game of thrones because that the, those couple of chapters we have yeah. prior to him going to the Iron Islands, he is a bit of a pain in the arse and he, he is hard yeah. to read. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it would have been nice to have had a Theon POV at Winterfell, Winterfell mm -hmm. before he took Winterfell, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, where things were a little more uncertain. Uh, before it, like he had any kind of ideas about taking over Winterfell, like what was he thinking Mm. when he lives there uh yeah. was he always pushing against the stark identity kind of like those kids that say that they don't like they they they're mean to the person they really fancy yeah <laughs> that's kind of yeah. like with theon yeah. like he's just yeah uh the thing with jane jane asks him um you know she says will he will he help her escape that she she she'd be his wife if she wanted like she'd be with him instead of with Ramsey and they could escape and she didn't yeah. care um I mean she must have heard the stories of Ramsey already and this is somebody that has been possibly through a number of brothels thanks to Littlefinger. yeah it sounds like she's been trained yeah yeah but it's a testament to the fear that she has of Ramsey I mean who wouldn't yeah. um that she she's willing to run off with Theon in the state that he's in she's so desperate mm. but she's she's also very strong the way she says she'll be a good wife and all that kind of thing um she's i hope there's something big in store for her i hope there's a happy ending for her oh she's a, she's a northern girl but she's not a stark mm -mm. so it's just yeah it just, it's just awful what's happening to her and there must be some there must be suspicion. It's just this really weird situation at the moment where everybody knows that the Boltons shouldn't be there and they abs ab actually absolutely hate them. There's a massive history there that hopefully we'll find a bit more out about in the, the these two books, the Blood and Fire books, like way, the way back history. Um, nobody seems to trust anyone everybody knows that there's going to be some sort of like mutiny or or it's they're going to turn on each other or what you know it's it's there it's there it's there throughout the whole atmosphere mm. and the only thing that Roos can do to rally against that is to try to get everyone to focus on stannis um and how terrible and bad and ridiculous stannis is as a character and like oh you know bring it on as if you can as if you can get into Winterfell, as if you're going to take us. But he also says, he talks about the weather, Roos, um, and he says many of us will not see the spring. Do you think, I, I, I just immediately thought, it sounds like you're including yourself in that there, in yeah. that, that, that conversation there, Roos. Yeah. Do you think the lady doth protest too much, the lady being Roos? Uh, <clears throat> I feel mm. like, and we'll get into this a little bit more with, with dusted in the crypts later but all i don't i feel like all is not what it seems with Roos. i'm not how i'm not sure how much his heart is in it mm. in keeping in keeping winterfell for ramsay basically like i he he was he's he's convinced yeah. that ramsay is is trying to kill him or somebody's trying <coughs> to kill him uh yeah. dustin says it in this chapter as well uh he reckons ramsay will kill any sons that he has 
So there's not a legacy in this for Roos as such. Um, I just uh, and any legacy is going to be severely tainted by Ramsey. He can't assume that like there's no way the North is going to let Ramsey rule the way Ramsey is. There's no way they're going to let him stay in power. I don't know. I feel like I part of me wonders is is, is Roos setting this up to fail? Ah. Uh. Yeah, I don't know, setting it up to fail for Ramsey. Like it's a bit too it was it's a bit too much bravado for mm -hmm. the Roos that we know to go on about oh Stannis is never gonna get in here. Like even Tywin Lannister wouldn't have done that. Like yeah. they wouldn't have like him and Tywin are very never count your chickens before they hatch kind of guys. Yeah, sorry, I am here. I'm just trying to uh plug the computer in <laughs> no problem um i i'm not entirely sure if he is uh i i kind of feel like he would he might let winterfell fall just to just to uh oh we have something wrong here i feel like huh. okay i'm trying to mute claire sorry folks technical issues uh it won't let me mute her sorry guys just give us two seconds and we'll fix it ah. it will not let me mute her thank you very much google hangouts this is very helpful Sorry, folks. Uh... Okay. I think I've hidden Claire, but I can still hear that static. I hope you guys, can you guys hear that static? Can you just let me know in the chat? Because it will not let me. Aha, she's gone now. Okay. Hopefully she'll be back soon. Um, so uh, let me see. Connie is saying Theon's horror mirrors Sansa's uh, about wishing to have stayed with the Starks. The uh, Theon betrayed Rob and Stans Stanza. Sa sorry. Theon betrayed Rob and Sansa betrayed Ned to Cersei. Yeah, that's true. Um, although I don't think Sansa killed any children. <laughs> Um, although in fairness, I guess Theon didn't. He just let Ramsay do it for him. Uh, Sonny says Theon is homeless and he doesn't have a mother to take care of him. It's funny how many of our main characters are motherless and have been motherless. And I would say a disproportionate amount of the characters have been motherless. Even like a lot of the Stark characters, um, like they were so young when they lost Kat so uh yeah um and claire's laptop just died so don't worry it's fine <laughs> i could hear the static on my end so hopefully hopefully it's okay now um she'll be back very soon folks so uh i'd be interested to know has anyone else been reading fire and blood uh because i loved it and i'll just show you a very early illustration just so that you can get an idea of what it's like because it's beautiful oh here she is hi sorry about that i, I was going to um, show and i was going to show an illustration from the book oh wow. yeah yeah they're fantastic here it is now they're in black and white but i feel yeah, like it gives yeah. that kind of old history book type feeling to it. that's like, uh oris baratheon and yeah and uh, is there an index knife. there's no um the pictures the illustrations aren't footnoted or anything either yeah that's a shame that would have been uh, that would they have don't been have good. like mm. like obviously it, it corresponds with the page you're on but mm -hmm. um it would be nice if they yeah i'm sure that they'll release like a full cover full color really expensive version of it but anyway yeah. um so yeah i was just saying that i'm not sure i think Roos might be 
I'm not I'm not necessarily I'm not convinced on his defense of Winterfell yet. I'm, I, I'll, no, I'll talk a bit more about that when we yeah. get to Lady Dustin, but I'm not entirely convinced about him. Um, yeah, so let's. Uh, oh yeah, there's talk of the ravens watching, and just as the wedding is happening, and also as the wedding is happening, one of these fellas, where they yeah, 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 starts laughing. Yeah, yeah. What's that all about? Is it just laughing at the Boltons? Yeah, maybe. And he hears uh, Theon, he hears the trees whispering his name. Yeah. Uh, so then at the wedding, the uh, Theon has two conversations that are of note with Rowan, mm -hmm. one of the spear wives, um, who will be mentioned in uh, the pink letter that will go to John, right? Yeah. And then Lady Dustin. Uh, yeah. So Lady Dustin hates the maesters. Mm. And I mean, so few people bring up the points that she's bringing up. It's true. It's remarkable. It, it, it's absolutely true. Who, you know, who runs who? And he, even, oh, <laughs> I've only read three chapters, but just avoiding spoilers for, for Blood and Fire, it's, it's remarkable, actually, how they have established themselves right from the very beginning. Is it magic? This is my question because yeah. even in Blood yeah. and Fire, it's like, yeah, how do they manage to worm their way in mm -hmm. into so many situations where the culture is different, where the religion is different? Like, I never, like, obviously, we've been suspicious of the Maesters, but it never fully kind of registered with me until like Fire and Blood this week and Lady Dustin again. It's like, like, they're so different to. How do, how do they manage to worm their way into everything? And the fact that they're trying to, the fact that they try to control the ravens or they do control the ravens sending messages, it's almost like they are trying to talk through the ravens like Bran can, but they can't do that. They can teach yeah. the ravens to send messages, but they can't communicate through or with ravens like maybe the old gods could they can't but what they can do is twist the words of yes. everything that said they if they control communication then they control how people think basically um which is probably why not many people question them so they become invaluable um to whether it's birthing your children uh, to highborns particularly, uh, uh, if, whether it's birthing your children, educating your children, reading and writing letters for the for the Lord, who sometimes doesn't even know how to read or write himself. So everybody, all all of that that layer of society is super dependable on my well, Yeah, something but I hadn't picked up have. on. Yeah, something I hadn't picked up on before is the fact that. Uh, lower lords aspire to having a maester, so it becomes yes. like a badge of honor. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like having your own private plastic surgeon, I guess. Today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. the equivalent is today, but uh, I was thinking of like the old the Victorians uh, who had yeah. stately homes and they would hire a hermit yeah. for their garden. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's it, there's there's not an equivalent. I feel. Um, I'd like to know from the chat, would you have a maester in your house? Because I'd be interested, do we know if there are any like high level lords that do not have maesters? I can't, I couldn't think, I didn't get to search. I mean, they're even, even the fact that, the, the, because they crop up in the story where you oh. don't imagine they would be like there are maesters on the Iron Islands. Mm -hmm. There are Meisters in the north mm -hmm. that they're supposed to be linked to the Seven and the Citadel and the Faith, aren't they? Oh, well, this is what got me thinking they? as well. I don't know if they are. I think I don't think a Meister needs to be that religious. I think so they Annie, could be anywhere in West because they're you in can dawn. have you can yeah. have a a north uh, a Meister from the north, so they would mm. probably worship the old gods. 
so I don't necessarily like a maester can marry you I guess oh no a septon can marry you not a maester right there's no septon at I don't know I don't know I don't know but I don't necessarily it's, think maesters are um maesters are religious necessarily I don't think I don't think uh to. no no I'll, yeah so I'm just uh, I'm just any, laughing at your question that you asked. Uh, would you have a maestro in, in the house? <laughs> I was going to say I did, and it didn't work out that well. <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, well, he yeah. says, why not? But always have a trusted assistant. Says, hey, you, yeah, yeah. you are taking your life into your own hands. I don't know. And Connie says. Funny how the small folk survive without maesters. I often think about yes. this. The small folk yes. have no problem in having yeah. children. But how yeah. many Targaryen yeah. children? Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure what the maesters were doing. I'm not sure yeah. if they should have been trusting them. It is funny how many how many lords and ladies and like people die in childbirth all the time but we we do have just mm. from uh who asked earlier on about the mothers being motherless and there's a disproportionate amount of characters in our series that do not have mothers or lost their mothers quite young and i'm not saying yeah, that yeah. maesters are out there killing mothers but mm. it's not like they're that good and yeah. I don't know. They administer medications, poisons. And, they, and it's, they, it's up yeah. to the, each individual maester. So if you're lucky, you might get Kyburn, who knows mm. how to use mold, and Eamon, who knows how to use molds, like yeah. to create a kind of an antibiotic yeah. or something. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, even Pycelle could not save John Aaron, says Connie. Yeah. Mm. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's all a bit funny uh, and I think she's absolutely right they are like grey rats and what do rats do they eat everything we rely on them too much she says and that's absolutely true Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't agree more mm -hmm. uh, what happens if all the ra ravens die what good will your maester be that's what I was thinking if all the mm -hmm. if something happened and all the ravens just dropped dead mm -hmm. What can your maester actually do then? Because I guess the the fundamental primary kind of role for a maester is communication, right? Yeah, that's essential. Absolutely. Yeah. Without ravens, yeah, how do they do? And it? and it's not like they're. I feel like it, there's not an even amount of education. There doesn't seem to be a standardization of education. No, you don't You've got access to it. If, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't know how good it's going to be. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. It makes you wonder if by killing certain ladies, it's to manipulate alliances by marriages. I mean, there are certainly people mm. in our series that are suspicious of their maesters when, or they at least blame their maesters, rightly or wrongly, when somebody dies, right? Uh, but maybe it's not always wrong. And the the biggest thing about the, Dustin's point is that you don't they they drop their surnames they drop their family mm -hmm. names so you don't know where these guys come from, mm -hmm. and that's her biggest issue with them. Which makes me wonder: is there someone in particular that she's worried about? Um, well, she did say one of the things that she talked about was uh, Ned Ned's father. Um, Ricard mm -hmm. and how he had a Meister uh, Wallace Flowers and that the she seemed to think that the Tully match which obviously we get to find out in the next chapter she has got you know that this she's, she's 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 got real beef about this and has had for a long long time but does she but maybe she's just looking for someone to blame for what happened but she does seem to point the finger in the direction of the Meister, um, Ned's father's Meister, Wallace Flowers. So uh, suggesting that the Tully match was his idea and he'd been kind of like whispering in um, Ricard's ear about mm. 
you know so so maybe there is something more to it like this control and communication and influence and um because how easy would it be to i don't know you can't you shouldn't do that there's a prophecy about this or this is from this you know you can pull interpret anything that's already been written previously knowing that what's been written previously is horse shit anyway from previous meisters so i actually like i, I was listening to one of johnny's live streams a, a few days ago um they were talking about the hound they were doing like a a, a character spotlight mm -hmm. Um, and they ended up talking about the, the the old town and the citadel. And I didn't know that Johnny wanted like Johnny's theory is that um, probably this in the TV show, maybe rather than the books, but the old town would be scorched and the citadel would like you know go up in flames, which everybody just goes, oh my god, that's just like that would be such a loss. All that old literature and all those old books, and it's like. But from the perspective of Lady Dustin, do it, just do it, just get, scorch it all, get rid of it. It's all just lies and centuries of just, we know it is because we know that there is a true, there is a true history there, but I just don't, it's not, it's not being captured by the Meisters. They're, they're putting their own spin on it for their own agenda. And I think there is some sort of control mechanism there for the whole organization and um it's sinister well it's kind of like when <laughs> with the the vatican um you know all the the conspiracy theories about the vatican that they hoard away art and knowledge mm. for themselves but i like we went to the vatican a couple of years ago to see the um uh what we call it sistine chapel and mm. like we had an early morning ticket like first in the door skip the queues all that kind of thing first of all i had a massive problem with like people like people queue for four and five hours people in wheelchairs everything it's it's horrendous yeah. and so we had got this fast pass thing and we went in and you're just kind of trying to just get to the sistine chapel before the crowd do but honestly yeah. you pass so many rooms full of the most amazing art artists yeah. that would have been deemed probably sacrilegious, yeah. profane, like Francis Bacon, Picasso's, wow. all, like the most amazing, and just rooms and rooms and rooms. And you're like, what the hell? Like, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what is down here? Now, they're not hiding it, but it's not like, I, I didn't even know this was going to be there. It was like, this is yeah. like a treasure trove. And if the same is true of the Citadel, like what do they have in the Citadel that is... Yeah. Like there's so many things that have gone missing over the years. It feels like the Citadel would be like Cambridge or Oxford, that if there's a book made, a copy of it will go to the Citadel. And I hope I that I... Sam discovers some of this. How long have the Meisters been around? Um, I just I just wonder how long they've been there as an order or if they've been, or, you know, how long they've been kind of organised in the, in the sort of you know the, the the organization that they're in at the moment so old town is the oldest city isn't it it's mm. the i think it's the oldest city in westeros and it's the city that aegon was crowned in it's also the city that he wanted to model king's landing on or he wanted king's landing like old town is the jewel in westeros it was yeah yeah the jewel so i i mean that's that's a great way for the maesters to build up that kind of city or be at the heart of that kind of city and to build it themselves up in such a way that people will want a bit of that in their in their court yeah the art bars are nowhere in the riverlands or wherever you know or oh, the mm. maesters from old town let's get let's get a bit of that action in so you can see how they would yeah. work their way in bit by bit over generations especially you know with such an anti-magic feeling growing in the world as well well it's yeah yeah uh, i was just i was going to say that connie the woods witches are small folk meisters um they are but they it's funny how you know like you say with meisters it's almost like they're revered at, um you know professional class uh where you kind of 
aspire to have a Meister. Whereas wood, wood switches do pretty much, well, a lot of the same function, healing, education, passing Maybe down better. legends and stuff, probably, yeah. But they're seen as, uh, you know, the same thing. Wood, wood switch is seen as bad, Meister's seen as good. And it's like, how did that happen? It's very, it, it, it really mirrors pagan Christian relationships mm. um, in early like Saxon England and and things like that in particular uh, after the Romans left which mm. you know there is evidence that there was a there was some somebody was around before all of all of the the civilizations we now know in Westeros there was someone there something was there you know the sea stone chair yeah. these amazing structures there's something there was something better there you know like like when people looked back and saw all these things and were like it's, I feel like there was someone better here, and it was. It was the Romans, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. So I wonder yeah, where yeah. that, where they're like, uh, was there a Roman type empire? Yeah, yeah. We've talked about that with the wall, wall and stuff like that, which based on Hadrian's Wall, which was evidence of a, like another. There was another empire here, but people were just trying to get on. People were just trying to survive. So, um, yeah, yeah. Old, old Nan was the history keeper. Probably, a, you know, a, maybe a truer history keeper than the books that were in the Winterfell Library, that if they were written mainly by Meisters. Um, well, speaking yeah. of history keepers, let's go, will we go to Dorne and talk about yeah. history rewriters? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I really don't know how they're going to get away with this shit in Dorne, honestly. <sighs> um, how why on earth and how are they going to keep Marcella from telling the truth to Balon Swan if it's the real Marcella? Well, two things there. Either it's not the real Marcella and they're yeah. able to manipulate whoever she is um, or or um, she's just completely madly in love with Tristane and it's teenage love and she'll do whatever for a Dornish prince and you know I, I just um or they're treating her better than she was ever treated by her own family I feel like I mean, Marcella I think she can, she, she, she's never going to be able to get back to King's Landing is she that's that's just not going to happen because no. <sighs> They'll either the Lannisters will see that she's been deformed, as they will see it, or they'll see that it's not her. She's a different. I mean, you know, she's been there for quite a while, but Cersei, I think, would still know who her daughter was and what she looked last looked like when she last saw her. Um, she'd be able to recognise her own blood. But my my yeah. big thing with Marcella, I think one of two things will happen with Marcella. She'll come back in a golden shroud. Yeah. But it'll be a, a crowned, mm. not dead. Uh, that that maybe fake Marcella will die, or yeah, I feel like this is going to happen with at least a couple of characters. We will never know, and she'll just disappear because yeah. that happens so much throughout history of in this series, people just disappearing. They were never he heard from again. That could easily happen with Marcella. That she's just she gets lost somewhere between Dorne and King's Landing and Well before before we get into Marcella, there's a few mm. things happening in this chapter. So we get to meet some of the the um sand snakes again. And we get to see through Aero Hotar's eyes, you know, what they're about a bit more, what their you know, weapon of choice is, etc. There's a new Kingsguard in town, Balin Swan, who seems to be a little less ripe for manipulation than um, Oakheart was, which has been picked up by Aero, uh, Aero Hotar. But who, so he brings the skull, and this is supposed to appease the Dornish, and they kind of pretend that it does and like praise the Lannisters and, you know, bail to King Tom and blah, blah, blah. It's all this mummer's farce going on. But this skull is grinning and it's big enough to uh, 
reassure everybody that it was the mountain he couldn't have that this is a guy who is like what seven foot something that there are not many other people ever that you could mistake for the mountain apart from possibly his brother sandor can so who, who what's this grinning skull can i ask a Go stupid on. question yeah do skulls differ that much in size or is it like all the stuff around them um, like i don't really know i've not i've never seen a skull believe it or not oh no i have i've seen loads of skulls in the catacombs i don't remember noticing different different sizes sizes i think he would his head his actual skull itself would be mm. considerably bigger than that of a normal i had a mad man. idea yeah I know that the current mountain, uh -huh. there's a theory out there that his head is Rob Stark's head, which I really like, actually. And he's okay. called Robert Strong because Rob Stark, right? Yeah, yeah. So it could actually be his head, right? It could actually be the mountain's head. Mm -hmm. It could be Rob Stark's head. Like, if we look at the two heads that we have, in this story yeah. that that head was going to joffrey rob stark's head was going to joffrey so they could mm -hmm. have sent that head to door yeah they could have done I'm i just, don't think it is i think it's the mountain's head and i think rob stark's head is on the mountain i was wondering if it was a giant's head a giant skull <laughs> and if that was you know they pull that out from the crypts underneath the red keep or something and that maybe they used to be they used to be giants in King's Landing or, you know, who Maybe. knows? Um, know. There's this, there's something, again, just, and I don't know if this just links to it piquing everybody's interest from the previous chapter with Lady Dustin, but the Meister in this chapter, the Dornish Meister, seems really, there's something suspicious about him and his behaviour. He's being really... Well, well, just suspect, I think. He is... Um... Oh, Connie says it could be a dwarf skull. That would make sense. Because they've yeah, been killing... Be. Yeah, 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 that would yeah, really make sense, Connie. Yeah, mm. I like it. Oh, yeah. God, Sonny, I don't know. <laughs> if it's mm. Rob Stark's head, do you think it's Rob Stark's brain? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about it when we get to it. I'll have to think about that one. That's really, really twisted. Could be too sunny. Um, but yeah, well, the then minister it, I hadn't noticed now, to be fair. I don't know. I, I, I hadn't really noticed that. I am wondering whether or not he might just be a spy for Cersei. Um, but so what we've got here is the Lannisters want Marcella to return to King's Landing with Bale and Swan. Uh, Doran is saying, Oh, why don't you go by ship? And why do you, you know, and they're judging the reaction of Bale on Swan of like, Oh, no, 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 that would, you know, we're, that we're, we'll, we'll go this way and we'll go that way. He's up, we hear at the end of the chapter that Doran has heard from a friend at court that they were, they were plotting to kill Tristane anyway on the way back to King's Landing. So they would, you know, bring him, but just. just dispose of him which really does sound like a Cersei plan um it's where did she get the details of this plan well that's what I'm going to ask who is the friend at court it's who's... so detailed yeah yeah it has to have been someone who was in the meeting it's got to be Kyburn, hasn't it it's got to be Kyburn. it yeah. has it can only be Kyburn, mm -hmm. which would be nice if their maester is spying on them and then Ky Kyburn is spying <laughs> that would be <laughs> really good it's a meter off yeah. uh, but yeah he there's a, i think it's got to be Clyburn. yeah it so has to be they were um it's the only person cersei would allow in the room mm. to be it, it's she, he's the only one that would be privy to that plan or deliver that plan on cersei's behalf the only one so they're now got so the new plan now is that they're going to um 
Marcella is going to send Swan on a revenge mission after Darkstar because apparently it was him, not Oakheart, who, who tried to behead her. Um, with the Sand Snakes going back to King's Landing with Marcella. So it, they're taking a big risk there if it isn't Marcella because they're prepared for her to go back to court as long as it's with the Sand Snakes so that they can, you know, they can again provide an ear at court for Doran. So I wonder, does Doran think that his current friend at court isn't going to last much longer, which is why he needs to have some Sand Snakes there? Could be. I mean, she did threaten Kyburn. The mm. one of the last times we saw Cersei, mm. she's not particularly. It could be that he realizes she's really unhinged. Also, yeah. she, he's not safe anymore because she's locked up. Mm. At this stage, right? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she is up? still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, by the time, because feast is, it's probably around the same time as this. So she, he, he may mm. already know that she's she's gone. Yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, so the Bale on Swan, Dark Star fight. I I think we should call it Dark Star's Swan Song. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> should be here all week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, why send? Well, Tyene has got a mother. Used to be a, a set. What well, was a scepter? And on that basis, Doran thinks it's a good idea to... Yeah, this is not a good idea. <laughs> no. To send so Ty to get, to get close to the High Septon. Um, yeah, that isn't a good idea at all, is it? But I, I was, yeah. High Septon, High Sparrow, what's going to happen here? Is she mm. going to be killed if anything happens to these people? Um, is she going to assassinate somebody she shouldn't or try to assassinate mm -hmm. somebody? Uh, and Lady Nim on the council? Yeah. I, I'm not sure how any of this is going to go. It all sounds very dodgy. Yeah, uh, yeah. It feels like and they're all Sorella, just... where, where is it? it where, I mean, Sorella, you would think, is... Well, no, she's more involved with the Meisters rather than the, yeah. the, the, the Faith. Um, There's somebody that we haven't talked about, Elaria. Mm who gives an amazing anti-violence, yeah. anti-war speech, yeah. completely, like, Different. night and day from the TV show character. <laughs> yeah. And I want to ask you, what does this reveal about Oberyn, that this was the woman that he chose to spend most of his life with? Yeah. That she's such a pacifist and doesn't seek vengeance or doesn't want to this ongoing bloodletting. Does that reveal anything about Oberyn? Does it reveal? Does it reveal something about Doran? Did did her and Doran? Did she was she placed in Oberyn's path by Doran to try and temper Oberyn's character a little bit? Because she's kind of brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. I mean, what will we? Well, that links into what we know about Doran is he's saying he'll only wait, wage a war that he can win. Mm -hmm. So all of the players that are in Doran are there play strategically and they're in the right place and exactly where Doran wants everybody to be. And this thing about them being a, quite a tight team, you know, the brothers, which I'm not, again, I'm not too sure whether this is true or not, but the whole thing about the grass and the viper, you know, he was the viper, I'm the sweet swaying grass but i'm the one that hides the viper and we you know they work quite closely as as a as a team so i don't know um i'm not i'm not quite sure what it tells us about Oberyn. actually maybe it doesn't say anything but mm. i feel like this isn't the kind of i don't know it's not really what you'd expect from the woman that was with Oberyn martell no um and yeah the show ruined her <laughs> i maybe love she the has, maybe she has got another show. plan maybe maybe she's like you know going along with what he's saying in order to get them into the, the um king's landing and then it's plan b yeah connie yeah. said the show killed her character um yeah he met her on e-harmony 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Harmony, Doran Harmony. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, that's all I have for the Watcher, except for the fact that it's a great name because we don't yeah. really get much from Ario except that last bit yeah. with his his yeah. vow um, versus yeah. Doran's vow. Yeah. Carrying Doran into bed. This, yeah. this man. I don't know what's going on with Doran. This is more than gout. Mm. This fella is more than gout, I think. Definitely. There's something that's going on with him. I'm not sure what. I wonder was Doran ever poisoned? Or is he being poisoned? Anyway. Maybe. Maybe maybe the same thing that Hosta happened to Hosta, but perhaps because he's a bigger guy, it didn't take him down as easily. Well, and somebody else mentioned that uh, mm. Hoster's maester didn't save him yeah yeah yeah. maybe it's the maester um yeah so then we're into john eight um and we get a lovely scene with the lovely val so john is sending her to get torment and uh no better woman for the job <laughs> they give her a blind horse <laughs> go get on her mission and uh she says she doesn't need, she, she knows the woods better than any horse so she'll be fine she's such a badass i absolutely love val my biggest question concerning this is she's worried about monster she's given him a milk name monster which is um gilly's baby she's worried about, about him because she reckons mel knows that he's not mance's baby she reckon Mel knows the truth. So now she's worried about Monster. And my question is, why worry about him now if he's if the the plan worked? Why would Mel do anything to him unless there's something else in Monster's blood that that Val is aware of that maybe John isn't aware of? I don't know. I just presume that Val doesn't like Mel. <laughs> That's why she just wants to keep the baby away. And if there is, if she isn't entirely sure, um, if it is, you know, um, Mansi's baby or not, then maybe she still might want him for the royal blood. But I think, I think she does know. I think Val's absolutely really right. She knows that the baby is Craster's. Um, is Val yeah. trying to tell John something about the importance of Craster's blood then? And the importance of Craster's, like of of that baby in particular, that maybe John isn't twigging, because maybe she's overestimating John's abilities here. I mean, John is very good at like, uh, I mean, he's really overreaching at this stage. He's very he's he wants to know as much as he can about giants and giant culture and giant history and language and all that kind of thing. He's trying to learn more about the wildlings, put them in greater positions. He's he's got this sexually abused boy working as his squire, so he's completely going against social orders and social conventions at, at the wall. And he's also trying to learn as much as he can about whites by actively trying to get whites at the wall in the form of the corpses that he has locked up and guarded. And maybe she's thinking, oh, this guy seems like he's he's clued in and wants to learn loads. I'm sure he's twigged that there's something there's something a bit strange about Craster. I don't need to spell it out. He'll figure this out. Surely it'll click with him. But maybe. Yeah, maybe. Is, and is Val the one? No. Who who mentioned it before about uh, Monster being Craster's grandchild? No. About the baby with Gilly Sam. being Sam. Sam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they... Does, I wonder, does John know that? Anyway, it's just very strange. I don't know why she's worried what Mel would do to Monster. I don't know what she thinks Mel would do or what she thinks Mel might see in her fires. Maybe that's it. Maybe she thinks Mel will see the others coming for him. Yeah, Perhaps. maybe. Yeah. Um, Connie says maybe Craster is a Targ bastard and um, there's King's blood in Monster. To be honest... Anyone could be a Targ bastard. I tell you one thing, those fellas got around. There's loads of them. There's so many more of them than I was expecting. And there's anyone, could be anyone. Everybody could have King's blood at this stage. And uh, AU says gout is a 
botch for sure bitch for sure yes i'm sure gouch is you know you when i was like 21 first year at university and i had really bad pain in me to like really searing pain in my big toe i went to the doctors and he said it's it's gout and i went what do you mean it's gout and he said yeah it's like a sign of rich living and stuff you know like kings kings used to get and i was like i'm a student i'm living on a student grant i'm eating like <laughs> astro belts for, for lunch <laughs> for 10p mix-up from the shop and you're telling me that i've got gout that was really peculiar so yeah apparently i've had gout before in the past when i was in my early 20s for like I don't know some inflammation or something or other but yeah yeah it's an inflammation i don't i don't know if it's i think they've done a lot of rethinking on gout mm. um but yeah no i i i well believe that gout is very serious <clears throat> um it's just i feel like doran is deteriorating at a rate that is beyond gout maybe i'm wrong yeah, maybe i don't know a huge amount about the condition but yeah, um, but yeah, so uh, what did Connie say? Oh yeah, Craster is a targ bastard perhaps. Barbara says, hi Barbara, it's hinted at by Gilly that the walkers will smell the baby and come for it. Mm. Yeah, also um, the milk name that she gives him, Monster. Um, I thought the baby that went with Gilly was like the real monster, like, cause it's really cantankerous. Baby. Mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. right yeah yeah so this baby why are they calling him monster is it because he's a product of incest is it because mm. that he should have gone to the others because that's what the wildlings are calling him and by all accounts he's just a very affable little thing like we mm. haven't really heard m much complaining about this mm -hmm. Yeah, he's quite well behaved, isn't he, compared to Mansi's baby. So, I don't know. Don't know. Oh, God, you, you know a good bit about this then. God, that's terrible. Um. Well, mm. yeah. It's not nice. Yeah. yeah, not nice at all. Um. Yeah, so anyway, that's Val. Badass. Love her. I mm. want more Val yeah. in my yeah. life. Um. We, yeah, so the uh, um, hard home is it a red herring? Oh, hang on, before we get to hard home, there's a meeting with oh, sorry, there's a the men have concerns, yeah. So, this I'd is, say. yeah, so remember, this is a John chapter, exactly. There, there, there are uh. Well, there's so much going on actually in this chapter around the, the you know, just the general vibe and atmosphere at the wall. So we've got a giant there now uh, who's a vegan by the sound of it, <laughs> which I thought was quite amusing. Uh, yeah, he doesn't eat. Kind of like an elephant. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't eat meat, doesn't eat man's flesh. He likes to eat roots and vegetables and things, the harder the better. Um, so we have Septon, like lots and lots of hypocritical men from the Night's Watch here telling John that they have concerns. And I can kind of see it from both ways. I can see it from their point of view of, you know, these are the gripes that they've got. The gripes are uh, about, jo about Satin, you know how you know he's a whore and how you know how how is he how is he able to rise so so high at the wall um the fact that john offers yarrick the builder one one to start rebuilding the wall there's just so many things that john's like well how about this then as an idea what about this and they're like oh my god you are absolutely like just yeah but he thinks to himself surely they can see why i'm doing this no john they can't mm -hmm. you no. clearly need to explain this they're not yeah. getting it you're yeah. not talking about the sharpest minds in the business here yeah yeah exactly they're all afraid yeah. and hungry and under pressure and they are they have been trained in a certain way they have been conditioned to hate wildlings they've been conditioned to see the world in one way and you're trying to change everything it completely overnight with them. Um, AU says that monster is an abomination. 
poor monster. And Connie says, wonder if the children of the forest are carnivores then? Oh yeah, well, we yeah, we kind of talked about that last week, probably. I, I don't know. I don't know if I believe in the Jojen Pace thing. I hope it's not true. But um, yeah, awful. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, am I being too hard on John here, guys? I feel like he hasn't explained his reasons for doing certain things. It's things that seem obvious to an educated mind don't always see ob seem obvious to the uneducated mind or the mind that has had to think about those problems. I feel like he is expecting an awful lot from them in terms of rationalizing out and seeing the immediate future. They're dealing with very real, very present threats and he's trying to deal with others. Yeah. They're just dealing with having the people they've always been fighting, wildlings, sitting beside them at their dinner or whatever it is you know like they yeah uh, I, I he's not he's not That's making... the enemy to them they don't seem to quite understand that the like what do you mean there's a bigger picture it's that the wildlings are the enemy you're bringing them in you're going to actually go and find more of them and you expect us to feed them as well are you you, you know so you know no no i can i can i can kind of see where you know that's their little bubble that's their remit of course john is a bit more you know knowledgeable he's he's a bit more worldly on these matters and he is able to see the bigger picture plus he has seen the enemy a lot of the men at the, the, at the yes. night watch still haven't mm -hmm. seen you know they are still focused on the wildlings are the enemy it's always been that way um but he makes it quite clear at the end we've got to save those people at hard home or they'll die and rise again and we're fucked so why can't you see that but yeah i i feel like i and i've said this before he could do with having a few assemblies mm. spelling out to his brothers this is what's going to happen and um, i i do think hard home is a red herring in the sense that he thinks that that they'll all be whited and they'll but i feel like george is leading us to a situation whereby the wildlings are going to be defending the wall and the south against whited brothers of the night's watch yeah that's what i think is going to happen i think there's yeah. going to be a real like ironic moment where john will be proved to be right and he'll be the white <laughs> yeah i think that's what's gonna yeah. happen here um mother mole who's hard mother home mole? yeah yeah i don't know uh another woods witch maybe i don't know there seems to be something this this reminds me of like a mini doom like a, yeah. a mini valerian doom incident so there's somebody who has a vision uh, then there are questions about. Well, isn't there? A, isn't doesn't Aria later on see a ship that's that's coming into Bravos and it's full of it's a slaver ship and it's full of wildlings. God, I can't remember. Does she? I think in, so. Yeah. Oh, in yeah. The next in our next chapter. I'm sure we see. We've got an Aria chapter where the, she's a, 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 along the decks and she there's a there's a, a slaver ship that's coming from westeros or somewhere around that skagos or around that area but it's full of wildlings which makes me think that that would be quite sad if she had a vision of ships coming to carry them to safety uh for they've gone to hard home to await salvation and they get they think they're getting rescued but they just get taken away by slavers and sold on essos God, that would be awful. Mm. Oh, God. I thought that's exactly what happened. I thought that was written in the book. I think it is in a, in an upcoming chapter. I can't remember that. But, yeah, probably, uh, yeah. As much as I love <clears throat> that Heart Home episode, one of my favourite episodes in the entire TV show, I really think it's a red herring. Um, 
And it obviously is if they've all been taken. I can't remember that. Is that in the Mercy chapter or in the next? I think it might be in it might be in the next one actually, in the Blind Girl chapter. Right. When, she, when she's hanging around the dock selling cockles and right, right, okay, yeah, I think okay. something um, happens then. Yeah, uh, yeah. John is not in a good, not in a good state. Why does he want this guy to be his squire? I don't know. I know that there's a lot of fanship in there about some kind of like really? homoerotic relationship between John and Satin. But yeah. I don't um, know. Just briefly, Hard Home, it's cursed. It's known as Cursed. So it's, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Harren Hall of the North. Mm -hmm. It was burned. It's cursed. Spooky stuff happened where they expected salvation, but all they got was some sort of nightmarish devastation. Um, 600 years ago, this fire happened. So that's quite a long time ago. Way before... Um, way before the Targaryens? Yeah, but not necessarily way before dragons. Mm, yeah, so yeah. Dragons had been in Westeros before, but not necessarily Targaryen. Not necessarily Targaryen. Interesting. Um, yeah, it is, but yeah, hmm. I want you to finish Fire and Blood. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I. I mean, I. I don't know. I'm that. That kind of threw me now. The whole shipping of John and this kid. Platin, yeah. I don't know. It made me think that I, it feels like it's foreshadowing for John taking care of somebody who's going to have been through some horrible abuse, like Jane mm. or Sansa potentially. Um, but Barbara said the ship she sees is, has been damaged in storms, so it's pulled to Bravos to be repaired. Oh, so maybe the wildlings get saved since Bravos doesn't have slavery. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no slavery in Bravos. That's true. Um, that would be interesting if we've got the Dothraki going to Estras and the wildlings going to Essos. Um, That's one of the things that I'm interested to find out most about in Winds of Winter, though. Do they go to Hard Home? What happened at Hard Home? Why is it cursed? The spooky letters that are coming from that vicinity about dead things in the water and all that, you know, what the heck is going on there? I feel um, like, oh, yeah. Mm. Um, okay, Connie says, sounds like something cataclysmic. Mm, I agree. Yeah. yeah, there's so many things just throughout the, uh, like, planetos history where you've got, like, mm. things being repeated and coming back and old characters from families you know s similar histories being passed down through generations it feels like that about places as well mm. so it, we could be in for something cataclysmic at hard home again but Just i think to, it's going um, to be for the brothers not for the wildlings yeah 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 me too um, the just in reference to the wall in this chapter when they're going out with val who's been a little bit playful and flirty with John at this point. Um, but their journey under the, where the passage under the, wall, under the wall is described as twisty as a serpent and cold as the belly of an ice dragon, mm -hmm. which is like, ah, mm -hmm. there's an ice dragon under the wall. <laughs> I don't know. There's yes. definitely some sort of passage there. There's a shadow tower. Yeah. There's Grindles, mm. whatever he's called, um, tunnels and passages and things. So, um, do you, uh, do you ship Val and John? I'd ship them over John and his yeah, squad. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't you know whether this is she's, very quickly. She, yeah, she's been a bit flirty with him. She knocks him back, and then I think just from a again that <clears throat> oversensitive reader's perspective of, oh, he doesn't seem to be interested in Val, but he's very defensive over Satin, and it's like, okay, that doesn't mean that but they're going to end up having a relationship. He also thinks of you know nothing, Jon Snow, which it to me is just him thinking of yeah. the Grish and yeah, yeah. 
being haunted by love potentially so yeah i think this is the chapter where all of the black brothers of of import including that idiot Celador, uh, Septon Celador, decide after they leave John's room that they're definitely going to mutiny. That's That was the deciding factor, I think, just the shock in, in their reaction. Despite the fact him saying, look, basically, winter is coming means the, there's going to be a huge war between the living and the dead. In defence... Huge side. Yeah. And in defence of John... He says to them, we have some of the worst examples of human beings mm. in the Night's Watch. Yeah. And you're complaining about me taking a, an abused little boy on as a squire. Yeah. Let's do a quick risk assessment, shall yeah. we? Let, let's yeah. talk about the guy who was raping Septus. How about yeah. that? How about yeah. that guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. by the yeah. way, how was it ever even an option that he could go to the wall? I feel like people get executed for very little. Yeah. And then some yeah. people get the wall as an option. Yeah, you would have thought they'd hang him. It tells, but, it tells yeah. you a lot about the value of women, to be honest, more than anything else. Um, this but, is yeah. the, the next chapter is equally as weird. messed up, I think, and weird. Yeah, it do, there is a part of, of uh, Dance with Dragons that does get very weird in this clutch of chapters, definitely. What kind of frame of mind is Tyrion in to agree to ride the pig? I don't know, whatever puts you in a DeLorean. Like, now that you've said time tra travel to me, mm -hmm. I'm all like, I, I have no idea what he's thinking. Mm. Uh, is this is this sober Tyrion? Because I think he needs a drink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know whether he's just feeling sorry for Penny. I don't but know. also, he doesn't... I think he, he probably thinks that it might be a good way of impressing Danny later on, maybe. Could be. It could be. He is very calculated that way because I think he is also the kind of person that would befriend you and it not be particularly meaningful, like the relationship with Penny. And I don't think he'd really necessarily shed a tear if they, say, if, they, if they did grab her and throw her overboard. Or I think he'd feel awful if they tortured her and raped her and what have you. But so, if she just vanished, I don't. He'd just be like, he'd probably just shrug his shoulders. Um, he does get invested in relationships, certainly, but there are so. some that I think are quite superficial to him. And I think Penny probably is. I think he does feel sorry for her, but well, yeah. so this chapter is i don't know if this is george's in intention i assume it is um but it's it, it's very there's huge um uh kind of influence from the rhyme of the ancient mariner in this chapter mm. and coleridge and similar to walton in frankenstein this idea that they're stuck mm. and they're and then there's a tempest as well like yeah. we've got this yeah. storm but the 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 idea that he says that they kind of get bored and he has to entertain the crew. So mm. that's kind of when when that happens in the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, um, that's when he, like, that, that kind of coincides with him killing the albatross, which leads to him being cursed. Um, and I'm not mm. sure if, Pe I'm not sure what the point of Penny is, is what I'm trying to get mm. at. I'm mm. not sure if Penny is going to be a blessing or a curse for Tyrion mm. Mm. because... In some ways, I look at her and I feel like this is George trying to rehumanize Tyrion and like mm. bring us back around to liking Tyrion again and maybe to Tyrion kind of showing that he's not he's not the biggest shit in the world and maybe yeah. he he does he should try to survive and um, he doesn't have to die basically for all of his crimes or it's a curse because I think what it's going to do is actually strengthen his appreciation for his Lannister identity because she talks mm. about you have to you have to be you have to act differently around big people you can't yes. act the way you act you can't yeah. talk back to them you just have to make them laugh forget that you know mm. keep, them them so yeah, keep them so smiling so they don't kill you yeah yeah and uh yeah I mean I I feel like I'm not entirely sure I don't think it's going to pan out well for Penny. Mm. Um, but the way he asks her about her maidenhead and he, he fundamentally, I think 
Penny shows that he fundamentally doesn't understand what it's like to be a little person in the world. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely. As much as he thought he was disabled, he wasn't. Yeah. He's got no idea. Yeah. And like, even when he says, like, there's a huge cultural rift. And if this exists between him and Penny, what is it like between him and any member of the small folk? But yeah. that coming to my castle thing. And he's like, oh, yeah. this is how we learned. And this is what I found really interesting. This yeah. is how we learned what lords to trust and what lords not to trust. Mm. So it wasn't just a game that like highborn kids played. It was very specific to your house and to yeah. your region. Yeah. And yeah. that I found interesting. I never fully kind of um appreciated that element of the game before so again it's a reinforcing tool isn't it well it made me think as well of the young starks playing with the young phrase the 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 crossing yeah. what was the game that they played the yeah, well, it, the, crossing it was. was it the crossing it was it the was crossing that? yeah the crossing the, game yeah yeah, yeah yeah which is the phrase version i guess mm. of coming to my, coming castle. To my castle yeah I don't know. I got, I just get the impression that they're quite fair weather friends and that they're clinging together in desperation at the moment. Um, Penny's got nobody, and Tyrion sometimes can be kind to her, and she's terrified of all the what the big people will do if she's no longer entertaining. Um, but I, I, yeah, I I just get the impression that Tyrion wouldn't give two shits about what happened to Penny. Why didn't they eat the pig? Um, I think there is something in a chapter later on where something happens to the pig and the dog. Okay. I think. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, because I, I kept thinking, because Tyrion thinks that they'll eat him eventually. Yeah. Because they'll be the cabin boy, I guess, which is what they would do on ships. They yeah. The cabin boy. Which I I was thinking, God, that's monstrous. But then it was like, well, Manderley just ate two phrase and ate big helpings of them. Yeah. Which, by the way, it doesn't bode very well for ba Manderley. I feel maybe we're 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 too that's, quick. To... Yeah, I think that I think he's just you know he's he's somehow cursed now for for, for eating them. Yeah, knowingly. Yeah. Um, my only other question with this chapter is, um, why did Macaro? not why did he go willingly to his death what what last purpose was he fulfilling if any uh did he go willingly i thought it sounded like he, he it, there was men um, vanishing left right and center into the waves it was he was i mean he's a big guy but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to naturally anchor him to the ship well i assume he knew he was going to die on that ship he saw, what, saw it in the flames. Mm. Or Bonero did. Mm, maybe. I maybe he just knew Mel that can, he needs anyone to. Anyone can. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, it could just be a special Mel talent that she has. I mean, she is. She was supposed to be like one of the best in a, you know, mm. in a year. <laughs> <laughs> she was senior but prefect. She, yeah, but she. <laughs> um, it could just be that he knows his destiny is to end up with um, Victorian and that, you know, he's going to get pulled out of the water. Maybe he just knows that. Um, what I found quite funny in this chapter was the interaction between Mormon and Tyrion. So Tyrion's kind of guessing, like, you know, he's trying to put this personality onto Danny as being like some little kid, some young girl, maybe moment seeing how he is with Penny and going, look, she might be a young girl, but she will treat you justly, you know, depending on what she feels is th the right punishment for, you know, your name and who you are and who you've been associated with. Um, but within all of that, this is kind of, I suppose, moment sort of, you know, low key threatening Tyrion, but Tyrion's having none of it, and he can see right through. Like, hang on a minute, mate, what are you doing here? Why are you in exile? Uh, and then he basically turns it around to, you know, yeah, I know how you feel about Daenerys. You're desperate. You know, you. I saw who you were with in that in that brothel. You were with like this Daenerys lookalike, and 
you know, you're sad and blah, blah, blah. It might be enough for it to wind Mormon up that much that he smacks him across the mouth and he loses a tooth. Um, and, and then he just forgets about it later on, but it just makes me think, we know again it's one of those things where it's like we're not up to this yet you know the tv show has taken a completely different route and um what do what do you think will happen to jorah in the books do you think he will be forgiven or do you think as Tyrion thinks you're just desperate and you're doing anything you possibly can she's probably going to just throw you out as much as she'll throw me out she could behead you quite as easily as she's going to be had me so yeah. Jorah's really creepy in the books yeah, so yeah. I don't know she does miss him though mm. um what uh Sunny says I think Makoro went overboard and on purpose to get to Victorian I completely forgot that Makoro ends yeah. up with Victorian yeah. um so does that suggest that he's going to try and keep Victorian from Danny because is Makoro just trying to get to Danny Mm. Or is he trying to stop Victorian for getting to Danny? I wonder. Mm. I'm not sure. Mm. And not sure. I completely forgot that he ends up with Victorian. Yeah, I yeah. Completely forgot that. Yeah. But so he gives he he he, he tries to solve his um yeah. bright scale, doesn't he? And gives That's him right. like the fiery hand. That's right. Yeah. Um Jora. I mm. don't know what happens with Jora. I really am on a blank yeah. with Jora. I don't know. I really don't know. I isn't it? kind of don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of like, Meh. I really don't like Jorah in the books. I love Ian Glenn on the show. I think he's brilliant. Uh, I just don't like Jorah in the books. Just can't warm to him. I, there I don't... Is the, the, the other thing about this chapter that that the Tyrion thinks a lot about his time in the Sorrows on the Cog with young Griff and, and that group of people. Um, but also, um, well, he was treated like a lord there. He was, yeah. Do, there's, there's this thing that I that I feel with Sansa chapters, Antirian chapters. When they think of each other, they think of each other reasonably fairly. I wouldn't say fondly, but fairly, um, and how quick he is to give Penny that excuse of, no, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, they have this awkward, share this awkward kiss and he kind of pushes her away and says, I, I, I'm married. I can't. So he uses Sansa as the excuse for, I can't take anything further with you, Penny, despite what you may want. He's not unkind to her, I feel. No. He's very nice no. to her in that moment, yeah. There's this thing where I feel as though Tyrion and Sansa do somehow even even though it's on a subconscious level and because i know he's like been with he's since been with prostitutes in brothels and stuff like that but there is some sort of element of wanting to try to stay faithful to each other somehow it's weird um which makes me think that ultimately they will meet up again i um, think so yeah i yeah, think they will yeah, yeah for sure um okay the, uh, the only other thing uh, the, just when you were talking about sansa there um do you think Tyrion is is because his 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 chapters are so um trippy in this book like you've said uh, mm. several times about the time traveling stuff mm. and um do you think somebody is humbling him maybe not a god maybe somebody is magically humbling Tyrion, mm. like punishing him because he goes he every it's going from bad to worse mm. right he starts off as a lord mm. and he's going to end up as a slave and yeah. in between he's like this performing yeah. act yeah um yeah uh in the book she calls her original caregiver the old bear i forgot his name but he was in the house with the red door william darry mm. yeah okay yeah um yeah so turn cloak yes oh my god yeah i have to pee really badly should i pee <laughs> and then yeah. come back okay yeah. do you want to give your thoughts and i will be back okay okay, okay. i drank too much tea sorry guys i'll try i was yeah go on off you go <laughs> i was actually just about 
to do my nails uh, but this chapter is the chapter where we get the interaction between Theon and Lady Dustin in a lot more detail down in the crypts so there's there's a lot of stuff going on before that uh, but I just wanted to mention that John actually AU Packmule had asked me to do uh, I remembered this chapter because John had asked me to do uh, some audio for that that interaction between Theon and Lady Dustin. So I do remember that quite clearly. And I don't know, John, if you're there in the comments, if you're going to do a video about that, if you've got a theory about that, um, because just reading through that conversation again this week, um made me have some thoughts about brandon that i'm sure have been discussed before in this community on this platform um but i have some new thoughts about what Sorry. brandon what brandon could have been like um and i think there are questions about lady dustin when she wears black and she's this like eternal widow who it is she's actually grieving for um but i mean this was such an interesting concept at the end of this chapter about why do you love the starks why do you hate the starks that's just just a, a fantastic exchange between them um so i was just saying kat that um i had uh, i did a, um, a audio version of the conversation for john for au pat Mule a few months ago actually um and it was he, i was doing the lady dustin Oh, really? Oh, so, I yeah. So I well, I well, I remember this chapter quite clearly because of that, because of reading that that text. Uh, and I was asking him if he was going to do a theory video or what he was going to do with it. And he said, "I." He said, Sh "Sure, I am. It's going to be the origin of Winterfell." Interesting. Ah, so it's not released. Interesting. Yet. No, 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 no. Ah. So I'll, I'll be very, very, very ah. interested to see very that video. Interested. Yeah. Um, but this, this is the main feature of the chapter for me, is that exchange between um, Barbara Dustin and Theon down in the crypts. Totally. But before then, there I is a bit exactly of an exchange. I know exactly what you're going to talk about. <laughs> Go for it. Um, well, I, um, well, I'm just looking at my notes now. What was I going to say? You've thrown me. <laughs> Uh, it, well, what I said before about the snow concealing the black wounds of Winterfell and how snow hides everything, um, that uh, Theon, Theon he, he's still slipping between Theon and, and, and Reek. Um, Reek, Reek, rhymes with weak. Um, and he thinks that some really horrible thoughts but i suppose if you're in a desperate situation like that he thinks that maybe ramsey will leave him alone if he has jane to torture <laughs> which is a really horrible thought isn't it i mean he well, does especially feel... when he's roped in yeah yeah he's just he feels completely useless he does it does he does cross his mind about trying to save jane and he thinks he thinks of escape um But he also, when he's quizzed by the Spearwife, by Rowan the Spearwife, about how he took Winterfell, he just completely freaks out at that. Like, no, 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 I can't, you know, don't, don't, don't make a song out of it, for God's sake. You know, you'll, we'll, we'll both end up getting killed. This, I mean, there's, um, maybe this is the thing that you think I'm going to mention, but um mancy's taking a massive risk here a huge risk massive with the, with the songs that he's singing and changing the lyrics and well, like beyond yeah. being like oh my god oh my like god that. yeah yeah oh don't say that you're gonna get everyone killed. and then it's like he's either very good at reading people or he doesn't give a shit about what the outcome is going to be and he's just provoking this or he's just he's just playing it very clever and he knows what kind of reaction he's going to get but Theon doesn't. I mean, they laugh at it in the end. They laugh at the lyrics of his of his song, and then Theon's like, "Oh, thank God! Right, so that's okay. Everyone else can laugh now because he thinks it's funny." Um, but well, he's taking a massive risk there. He's singing. Um, what is it? The, the Dornish man's wife. 
Mm. So, I mean, that might lend credence to the Arthur Dane yeah. theory. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, yeah. They, they're making a huge, huge risk. Oh, they're appealing to a Theon that they... It feels like they're appealing to old Theon, thinking, oh, we'll appeal to his ego. Uh, we know this guy has an ego and I wonder where did they get that from because that's quite a, it is a very accurate reading of old Theon yeah. that he was definitely like big headed maybe oh I suppose Mance would have seen him right at Robert's when Robert came for dinner so he would have mm -hmm. got the measure of him probably because he's so arrogant so it, I guess that's how they would know that, that that's the best way to appeal to him yeah. offered to song out of it um the way theon explains l how they took winterfell doesn't mm. seem totally credible i mean the, the the credible part of it is that it was weakly defended so mm. it was always going to be a lot easier to get in you know there was no lord there it was um you know an old meister and a young boy in charge so it was yeah. It was easy in that respect. Um, that there's there's a there's a very small bit in this chapter where Theon visits the Godswood, um, and considering the description of the winter and how cold it is and the drifts of snow that are covering everything, almost hiding. The, the damage scorched Winterfell. But in the Godswood, there seems to be a, 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 almost like a, a, a warmth there. There's a heat there. It's very gentle autumn, isn't it? It's yeah. Very, yeah. So the snow's coming down, but there's a mist coming from from the like the the sort of roof of the, the you know the carpet of the forest and it's making it all muddy rather than snow. Yeah. So to me, that means there's some sort of heat there underneath the godswood. A heat from, I don't know, blood, human sacrifice, from something that seems to be like it makes it impervious to the 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 ice. And there's something very strange he, about that. He thinks about Bran a lot, actually. Mm. Even or like he thinks about the when Bran, when Br the day that Bran fell, and he thinks about what is the line again? He says, um, "Sorry, it's on my phone." The gods, the gods could not kill Bran, and then he thinks a strange thought. Mm. I really, I'm starting to think. I don't know. Maybe I'm starting to think Bran is already messing with his mind. Yeah. Yeah, and well, he hears, he hears a weeping, doesn't he? He goes into he basically doesn't he's he's desperate. He doesn't know why he's in the God's Wood. He's managed to find his way there, and he decides that he's desperate enough to start pr somehow praying to the trees. Um, and he starts hearing a, a crying noise, really quite vividly. He can hear what he thinks is Jane Poole crying, but it's not. It's something crying in the godswood which makes him just run away um but he, he thinks that he's thought before he hears this this weeping sound is is insane to the trees save me save me mm. you know jesus look at the situation i'm in just what do i do you know i know you're not my gods but just give me something set save me from this situation and then he hears this really like heartbreaking weeping and then he just he, he, he just hot foots it out of the god's wood um it's uh, so strange yeah and even um uh on davos fingers again they were talking about how um is there's a there's leaves falling on theon and it's almost like it's like they thought maybe it was bran trying to caress mm. him like reassure him mm. Mm. um maybe i mean it's it's brilliantly named again like the watcher it's brilliantly named because it's theon turncloak that they're all yeah. this is what they're saying but it's him 
turning his cloak, not just from Back great to joy to Stark, but like, yeah, the it reeks to Theon, but also I mm -hmm. feel like it's, he's, he's finally, it's not about, it's not really necessarily about being the Starks. It's about mm. the, these are the gods I, I get. These are the gods that okay. I want to be here almost. Um, but it's not, it's him being near Bran because he probably arrived around the time Bran was born. Yes. So he he would have really known Bran from birth. And yeah, he probably was there for a year or so before Bran was born. Like that's quite like mm. like he had as like he there's a, like he would have had a a a, a, a role in Bran's life. Oh, yeah, that he yeah, wouldn't like have had in, in Rob's or John's life. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. The, 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 that maybe we don't we don't see this connection. Mm. I mean, we obviously when Bra from Bran's POVs in Clash, like he's incredibly hurt and angry with, with Theon. Mm. Mm. Um but it it's just it's one of those things that it's like Bran is really I, I don't know if it's gonna be um uh, I hope it won't be a very dark manipulation of Theon. I think there will be a mm. lot of forgiveness there from Bran. Um, mm. uh, Barbara said Theon and Lady Dustin both wanted to be Starks she can hold a grudge longer than even Tywin Lannister and mm. everybody agrees with that um, EU mm. comments that there's also gargoyles on the ground and that he was Bran's age when he was taken by Ned yeah just like mm. when Bran was taken Nine. by Blood Raven, yeah. Raven right um, yeah. yeah so uh is there anything else before we move into the crypts? <laughs> well, just on that, actually, about how uh, if Theon relates to the Starks and being a Stark and wanting to be a Stark, when they get into the crypts, Theon is filled with dread. And it's this, this description of feeling like the eyes of the, of the statues are following him round. Now, that could just be guilt. <laughs> that could just be, oh, God, you know, I'm sorry about what happened and I know I shouldn't have done that. And, I should, you know, it could just be shame and guilt. But I think you'd only get that. Like, why should he, why should he feel dread? They've got nothing to do with him. He's ironborn. They're not his ancestors. Why should he be feeling this sense of, you know, ancient dead men's eyes following you around down there mm. and if you think about it we have uh, memories from Arya and Bran of playing in the crypts mm. Mm. when they were kids yeah um, Theon would have I been there don't, yeah. I, I presume Theon was there but I don't remember yeah. him being mentioned no I don't and he would have he probably maybe would have been there allowed. maybe yeah. maybe, mm. maybe he didn't want to go down yeah. Um, I I feel like that is for Starks only. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hodor didn't like it down there. Yeah. Um, Osha Stark. wasn't that like the Reeds didn't really like it down there. Yeah. Bran was like, eh, it's all right. Mm. Like they, 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 he was more used to it, I think maybe. Um, yeah. Rick it is, played, it's a oh, Rick, place, Rick so. on, it was like it was his home basically. Yeah. He was yeah. always down there. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I think that you, if you're if you're not a Stark, you don't belong, which is probably why the crypts have kind of covered themselves mm. up. Like they've they've mm. literally because they they obviously the destruction of Winterfell or whatever has destroyed the entrance, but it's almost like the crypts are hiding because the Starks aren't there. Yeah, and maybe yeah. Bran is the key to let the Theon in. Maybe yes. through yes. Bran that Theon gets like the old oh, God's it. blessing. Because the there is a, a, a reference to before they go into the crypts about the around the entrance where um Theon talks about, oh, this is where Bran fell. Like this spot, this exact spot is where Bran fell from the tower. Mm -hmm. Um so maybe maybe there is a connection, maybe you did have to get some sort of like it reminded me of the night fort. Yeah. The way yeah, they needed Sam to get into the night yeah. fort. 
yeah yeah it's something about like even Theon when he's going down be careful be careful be careful it's like yeah just be careful like it's there's something there's something down there um Connie says even F Ned felt that yeah that's true Ned uh, noticed the swords were gone and Ned remarked that there are ghosts haunting um around Winterfell yeah I mean um Indie Geek has a great video on that that that's that's that there's an army of ghosts basically down there waiting to fight mm -hmm. um in a talking like way um well there is that description as well of it what a great way to get people to just go all oh, right okay let's not talk about that then <laughs> which is the um they go deep and deep and deep and deeper and deeper and deeper almost like the house of black and white but you can't go any further than whatever level because it's all collapsed down there it's all it's all kind of caved in on itself right okay no one's going to argue with that no one's going to say really let's go and have a look let's see it's too dangerous just just leave it as it is um but that is a great excuse to um you know to make sure that that people don't go anywhere near where they shouldn't be because the the, the levels do go much much deeper and there's something underneath winterfell and underneath the crypts that uh you know you really 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 have to be a start to, to access yeah you said the kids played there they did and it's a strange place to go mm -hmm. play um yeah it is a strange place to go play if you're not comfortable there like the children so seem there. a lot more comfortable there than the adults <laughs> We hear about all these old Starks. We get reference to a few of them. So there's this Snowbeard who ruled Winterfell for hundreds of a hundred years or whatever. You know, a, a massive long rule in Winterfell. Then we get somebody called Brandon Shipwright who apparently built some ships and then sailed away and <laughs> never came back again. So I don't know, like Geryon maybe, like an adventurer. And then Theon feels some sort of an affinity when he hears his own name. There's a Theon Stark who is described as the hungry wolf. I don't know anything about Theon Stark. I don't know if it's in any of the other reference books or in World or anything like that. I think he's but... been mentioned before. But I don't <clears throat> what? Does I anyone think... know in the chat who Theon Stark he's, is? He's why, why he's oh, referred to as the hungry wolf? Hmm um again so original with their feckin names Jeez. Mm. yeah yeah we want <laughs> come on now the next generation of starks we want like a steve betty a steve <laughs> joseph yeah. bernard <laughs> Declan. um so we get the conversation then between theon and Barbary Dustin, where they're talking about the missing swords. Why do you hate the Starks? Theon has the courage to confront Lady Dustin and say, why do you hate the Starks? And she rallies back at him with, why do you love the Starks? And it turns out that the answer to that question for both of them is the same, which is they always wanted to be a Stark, but never could be. So he hates them and she, or she, he loves them and she hates them because they always wanted to be one but never could um do you think that brandon stark raped virgins um i don't know if he raped them necessarily but he see he what, what makes you think it will be rape i the description of right well there's something I think that Barbary Dustin wears black and has this massive agenda for the Starks because she has this undying relationship with Brandon. Where I don't know, we call it Stockholm Syndrome or whatever, I don't know, but she was... Um, she lost her virginity to him 
there's this thing about uh, oh shit, Marwin's outside. Sorry, I need to just go get him back in again. I'll be back in a second. This is just such an interesting what, point. No, 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 go on, go the, get Marwin. Go the get thing Marwin. that I want to think about is this whole his bloody sword and okay. it, a, a bloody sword is a beautiful thing. But um, okay. I'll be back yeah, in a no, second. go go get him. Marwin always comes first. Um, the, I'm not sure what. <laughs> I'm not sure. Theon Stark's sex addict? I'm not sure. Maybe. He says nothing on Theon, but if you're a Greyjoy, why would you name your son Theon? Honestly, AU, this book, Fire and Blood, I have no idea why they pick some of the names they pick. The only one I can't seem to find, like, there doesn't seem to be, and nobody seems to name their kid Magor. He was that bad. We have a Maelor, but I don't think we have another Maegor. I could be wrong about that because I'm not that up on Targ history. But um, they, they seem to just, they, I don't know, they just recycle names all the time. But Greyjoy naming a son Theon is interesting. Um, it's not like we have that many Victorians or Eurons going around outside yeah. of the Greyjoys. So I don't know why that is. A, it's a good question, though. Um, but anyway, you go, go back to Brandon and his bloody sword. Here. So he was, Brandon loved his sword. A bloody sword is a beautiful thing. And then she describes it as it hurt, but it was a sweet pain. Mm -hmm. um, and then she could, she was never ever going to be good enough. Um, because she was, you know, the daughter of a lesser lord. So she was never going to be good enough. Um, uh, and yeah, so yeah, and then what makes it even worse, what compounds it even more, is that she thought she was going to be a Stark through Ned. Um, so maybe it wasn't the connection with Brandon. Maybe she just desperately wanted to be oh, a Stark. Her dad oh, did. Her dad, dad said yeah. Her dad would have yeah. sold her maidenhead yeah. just to get. My question is, why wasn't Benjamin then considered? Maybe he was, and maybe that's why he was like, I'm off, I'm going this way, I'm, go I'm going north, you're bonkers. You're not yeah. getting my bloody sword, I'd sooner give it to the Night's Watch. Just, just this, this <laughs> <laughs> the description of, he loved his sword, a bloody sword is a beautiful thing, it hurt, but it was a sweet pain to me. Well, I just thought that was like, that oh, is, in your virginity. Can be yeah, great. but it seemed to be something that he really liked to do, like it was his thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I get you on that. But I don't necessarily think it's rape. I just think he's a bit of a... He's just a bit of a So creep. there's... I'm sure there must be a story out, out there somewhere, like I said when you went to the loo, uh, on this platform or on in the YouTube community about whether or not... If that's the case, if we can imagine that Brandon's a bit of a brute, death, certainly Ned was intimidated by him. He seemed to be the wild wolf, didn't he? He was hot-headed and he'd just jump up and run into a, into a fight but also he may have had this pretty dark side to him which was he would take what you know I'm the heir to Winterfell I'm going to take what I want I like to see you know this bloody sword which is a euphemism for sexual encounters with with maidens who probably wouldn't have been that willing so I'm thinking does he is, was that his thing that he raped virgins and she was one of them you know and got caught up in this you know I don't know Stockholm Syndrome fell in love with him desperately wanted to be a Stark that much that whatever it seemed that they had a relationship because she was talking about you know the last night we were together he told me that um, he, 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 he was going to marry Cat Tully um, but then the kick in the face was Ned took her husband who she eventually married who wasn't a Stark so she didn't you know she didn't get what she wanted but just to really like kick salt in the wounds um it, her husband got killed Ned brought a ho his horse back but not his bones so she's now got this everlasting vendetta about Ned Stark's bones will never reach Winterfell she has this burning hatred but still the reason is because she always wanted to be one of them. Anyway, uh, with the thing with, with Brandon, just to finish off what I'm saying here, is if this is what Brandon's like, 
we don't really get a massive we don't get a sense of like we kind of get a bit of a sense of what benjamin was like we get slightly more of a sense of what ned was like you know oh, oh, honorable ned we don't really get that much of a sense of what brandon was like and maybe something really rotten was happening with those siblings that made benjamin want to go to the wall made ned constantly feel guilty and also think reasonably favorably in his memories about Rhaegar and people like that maybe that's why uh Rickard Rickard sent Ned to the Vale to get away from Brandon so could, be, could, be, could be could be I mean uh, Brandon definitely comes off as a bit of a hothead in history for sure but if he was a brute and this was his thing and he had a sister who again there seemed to be a lot of fighting and competition and rivalry between them he's the heir to winterfell she's his sister he does this thing that's his thing she did, def that would definitely did he rape his own sister people. well she definitely i mean if brandon is like that that would explain why she did not like robert baratheon because robert baratheon comes off as being a similar kind of character mm. Mm. Um, perhaps it was supposed to be Brandon to go to the Vale, but maybe Brandon and Robert together wouldn't be good. Maybe Ned was going to be mm. a better influence than Robert. I don't know. Mm. But there's uh, the thing with Brandon as well. He does a lot of, he used to go for a lot of, he, he used to ride a lot mm. in the area of around the Barbrays mm -hmm. and uh, what's not the Barbrays? Um, the Barrettown. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's just Risewell, is it? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There in their land. So that idea that he was riding a lot. Mm. Definitely maybe mm. he's just a horn dog, but it is creepy to mm. to only want to take to only want to sleep with virgins for sure. Now the thing with Dustin, mm. I'm gonna do you want a bit of tin foil? Do you want a little bit of tin foil? Yes, I do. I could do with it. Yeah. We often talk, we have done especially on this reread. Mm about and it's out there in the fandom you know maybe dane is alive maybe high tower is alive maybe went is alive from the tower of joy um how do we know that dustin isn't alive how do we know that that's why his bones didn't come back yeah yeah and i was thinking about this today as well there's like this line that co constantly confuses people in the fan fandom about um Ned saying that they pull down the tower. Mm. That could be actually pulling down High Tower. That might might not be the Tower of Joy. Ooh. That could be them pulling Ooh. down High Tower. And yeah. maybe then a piece was made. And maybe Dustin is one of those guys that we think is a, that that Oh, I like that. Yeah. That went I like very that. far north with I like Dane that tinfoil. Went, <laughs> yeah, just a bit of tinfoil. That I was, feel like yeah. maybe he didn't bring bones back because there were no bones to bring yeah, back. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, you know, it's another thing that we constantly don't really think about as well. I feel like. But he Leanna told is her. like he, another one that we just assume she's did, dead. Didn't, maybe? Ned, didn't Ned tell uh, Lady Dustin that her husband had died an honourable death? Yeah. But still, to bring back the horse and not bring back the bones. I don't know. Mm. I, I don't know. There's a lot of unanswered questions with Tower of Joy, but just something maybe to throw out there. I um, just think this could be something that, this could be a little bit of an insight here into what Brandon was really like and that everyone perhaps was just, you know, the rest of the brothers and sisters were ruled by fear. Um maybe Rhaegar was helping her to get away from him and that's why she was crying at his sad song at the tourney uh maybe she was you know uh like Arya but some you know she was a fighter and she was a warrior and she was a rider and what you know so you know maybe she couldn't maybe she just couldn't defend herself against her own brother um I don't know it just it just makes me think oh Brandon seems like a bit of a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and he, you know, and he was known as the the wild wolf, which would, I suppose, to a younger brother, maybe be a way of of like making excuses for your older British brother's behaviour. 
Well, if Kat had a problem with Ned siring a bastard, that mm. would certainly have happened with Brandon. Mm. Mm. There would have been more than just one Jon Snow. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just judging, especially even maybe even with Dustin herself. Um, hi, Game of, Game of Theories with Marie. Thanks so much for popping along. Um, uh we've lots of comments here lots of stuff going on here um <laughs> eu says i think it was that was uh, for ramsey to hear i can't even follow what's going on um marie wonders uh why benjamin took the black yeah i mean that's the one of the biggest questions that's mm. going to be there's this good i feel like there's something massive there eu says he went to verify the story of mance and a corin um that could be it. I mean, I feel like um, Benjamin taking the black is also, it could only have happened after they knew. I mean, if it's if it's to go with the like northern families send, often send somebody to the wall. Yeah. Um, I feel that could only have happened once Rob was born, because why would you send your spare heir to the wall? Mm. in the aftermath of such a catastrophic war mm. it's it's unclear as to whether your house is safe yeah their position is safe and it could only have happened after rob after after there was a spare heir basically mm -hmm. I, I maybe I, I don't know but um let's talk about lady justin um should we trust her first of all because I have, I have like, I have like lots of arrows coming off her name, like wondering why, why is she down there? Is she trying to confirm Wex's story or is she trying to confirm the story that she's gotten from Manderley and decide, right, do I stay with Bruce or do I go into this Northern conspiracy if it mm, exists? She could be, yeah. yeah. Or is she down there on Bruce's behalf, going back to what I said at the beginning? Is Roos necessarily anti Stannis? Is he? Does he Ooh. actually give a shit about saving Winterfell just to hand it over to Ramsay? Um, or is she looking for a way to let Stannis in? Is she doing her own little side thing? Is she trying to find a way in for Stannis? I feel like she is sharing, oversharing with Theon, like like massively oversharing with Theon. Uh, and she tells him, oh, don't tell anybody. And that might be a test. It could also be a cover. Like it could also be, oh, don't tell anybody this because, you know, like I'm oversharing this so that if you end up telling somebody that I was down here, they'll just think I'm a crazy old woman or maybe they'll just think that I'm really bitter over Brandon or something like that. They won't see the real reason why I'm down here. Or maybe she's testing him so that if she if any of it gets back, she'll know that he's not to be trusted. Um, but I feel like the bit about Ned's bones rang true and it was really creepy. And I don't know. I'm I'm not sure about this whole northern conspiracy thing. I'm not sure. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um I the Starks were in power too long for them not to for the most of the North not want not to want them back. That's for sure. Judging by the history of Westeros, they are just the, the they they inspire the most loyalty in their liege lords for sure. Um the Boltons not so much. But she is you know, her sister was married to Roos, but Ramsay killed her nephew, her favourite nephew. I feel like she's in a very confused state. I Like, as readers, it's hard to know where she lies because I don't think she knows where she lies just yet. She might hate the Starks, but she also hates Ramsay. And it's not good what's happening here. Either way. Might... Yeah. I was just going to say, do you think she might still want to be a Stark? And if so, how would that happen? I mean, she's still described as being attractive. Like she's old, but she's not She's not unattractive for mm -hmm. sure. Um, Sonny says, Benjen takes the black, but he's permitted to visit Winterfell. Other Night's Watch aren't allowed to leave. I'm guessing that's something to do with the Stark connection. Um, uh, what's his name? Yoren? 
he was allowed to go and collect people in King's Landing. So it might be good for the north to have somebody who regularly visits Winterfell. It might be good. It might inspire um, lords in Winterfell to send people to the wall. It might just keep the wall very fresh in the minds of the lords of Winterfell. Just to have somebody visiting. I'm sure if I was on the if I was on the wall and I was Lord Commander like Mormont, I would be constantly sending somebody to the wall just back and forth or to Winterfell back and forth because that's going to be your main touchstone at Westeros. Um, Ned Stark will be your main touchstone. There is definitely favoritism there, though. You're right, Connie. Um, and it is a bit fishy. Um, AU says, I think she's trying to verify what Brandon told her about the crypts during pillow talk. Interesting. Um, what she said to Theon was to be shared with Ramsay. It is funny because it's the same chapter that he says, Reek belongs to Ramsay, Ramsay belongs to Reek. Um, and yeah, th that, that might be true for sure. Um, also, AU has given us lots of information, helpfully, about Theon Stark. Um, he defended the North during the Andal invasion. He was aided by House Bolton. Theon defeated the Andal warlord Argos Seven Star in the Battle of Weeping Water. Yeah, that rings a bell, actually. Um, Theon burned a score of Andal villages, killing hundreds and capturing three Tower House, a fortified sep. The king displayed the spike heads of his victims along the coastline to deter to deter future invaders. And the Iron Men AU, if I'm right in thinking. I believe the Iron Men are very anti Andal. Like they, some people consider them to be the first first men. Isn't that correct? So maybe that's why the name Theon is um, on the Iron Islands. Maybe that's why it's a shared name with the Northern Men. Maybe they respected the old Theon that um, fought against the Andals, perhaps. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I, I Barbara Dustin or Dustin. Barbara just mm -hmm. uh she is um she's an enigma wrapped in a conundrum she's <laughs> if you think about the parallel to cersei growing up thinking that she was going to marry prince rhaegar and become queen of the realm yes in a smaller scale same with barbara uh, barbara dustin is you know she thought that she was going to be the lady of winterfell um it so, do, so I just want to ask John, is we have the enemy of my enemy is my yeah, friend. Yeah, maybe that's it, AU, yeah. Is it does, does do you think that she's trying to pit she's using Theon to pit Roos against Ramsay and that and to to ignite that that kind of I don't know, one of the, one of them is gonna kill the other one, you know, as per T V show. I mean, that... I think the way they dispatched him in the TV show was pretty poor, to be honest with you. Oh, they could have made terrible. much more of it, yeah. Also, the, the actor playing Roos is just phenomenal. He's an Irish actor. He's just so great. Um, also, that yeah. line that <clears throat> oh, uh, Roos isn't happy with uh, Ari is crying, it doesn't mm. look good. Like, she yeah. clearly knows Ari is a fake. Yeah. But let tell Ramsay that he's to stop his wife from crying. Yeah. Like, have you seen what Ramsay did to Theon? Do you yeah. think that's actually a legitimate request? What is that all about? There's no mm. way she thinks that that's a legitimate request. There's also no way Roos wouldn't do that himself. Mm. Like what? I, I, I'm very confused as to the purpose of that. If anyone has a, a, a explanation for that, I can't get my head around that at all. Um, because I don't think Roos would have unless she is trying to interpret Roos's actions and assuming that's what he wants to get back mm. to Ramsey. I don't know. I don't know. Um John says, John has a reply there for you. Uh no, I think she knows he will tell Ramsey so she can accomplish her mission and yet have a reason to be in the crypt. Mm. I mean we only have her word for it. That all of this happened with Brandon as well. Like we don't know if it's true. Mm. I mean, how do we know? We don't. So should we make it up? <laughs> uh 
I don't think she sees the crack between Ramsey and Roos. Mm. I'd say she's probably more savvy. That I mean, she's known Roos for a long, long time. She's known Ramsey for a long, long time. Roos is like he was pretty old. Like this is the second time in in this book within a couple of chapters where we have someone be very candid with Theon. Mm. And the other person was Roos. Mm. He was like laying out his entire yeah. like belief yeah. in Ramsey. It's a very it do, it's not like George to just conveniently throw that in so we have a point of view into these characters' minds. They are using Theon for some reason. Mm. And the I, I'm again just the overall backdrop of all of the Northern Lords are at Winterfell at the moment. That I mean that that's that's <laughs> that's a really good uh, you know it's, it's a bit like the the Red Wedding get everybody of, of uh, importance there and destroy them all in one fell, fell swoop, but. <clears throat> We know, and so does Roos know, that the North men are loyal to and love for many, many, many years the Starks and can't stand the Boltons. Yet they're in this situation where everyone is being kind of passive aggressive, saying one thing, but actually meaning something completely different. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether she, I think. I think this is, I think the turn cloak in this chapter is not only Theon, I think it's also Dustin. I think mm. she is going to turn her cloak on Roos. Mm. I don't think she's part of the whole Manderley thing yet. Mm. I think she's deciding. She's gone down there to the crypts. Maybe you're right, AU. Maybe she's confirming something that Brandon told her that mm. Winterfell is protected and the North is protected by the Starks. It has to be the Starks. Mm. And she has to go down there to actually feel that in her bones. Mm. And like you can hear, um, like Theon says, her steps get heavier the further yeah. they get in. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's like the weight of this. Yeah. The weight yeah. of the realisation. Shit. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. No matter how yeah. much I hate them. Yeah, I have it to has get, to be then. Yeah. 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 I yeah. have to get Stannis in here and mm. I have to get them out mm -hmm. because and maybe she's not lying maybe she won't let Ned's bones back um mm. but I think I think that's I think that's what it is I think she's realized and mm. Rue said it she is the key to keeping the north mm. the Dustins are the key to keeping the north um, did I miss the discussion mm. of the wedding being planned at Barton? No, we didn't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any comments on that, Claire? I don't know. Is there a, a, dis a wedding being planned at Barton? I don't know what that is, John. I, I Sorry. That. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I was hoping Claire would get me out of a bind there. No. Sorry. Uh, speaking of Neds of Bones, where are Neds? Don't know. Are they with they're with um the guys going to Helen Reed, right? Yeah, and they're supposed At to have gotten will. lost in around in and around Mount Kaelin. Um lost. they're lost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I think she's a fascinating character, but I'm interested in how we've had two very, very candid conversations with Theon. AU says it was it was to be there before they moved to Winterfell. Oh, that's right. The um oh. the wedding. Yes, 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 yes. Um that could be because she doesn't well, want yeah, Ramsey to, to get married in Barton. Because it wouldn't legitimately them. be a start wedding if it wasn't in at the Heart Tree in, in the Godswood at Winterfell. It's funny because they buy new furniture and furnishings and everything. Mm -hmm. Like they really make it Right. extra special but they skip the bedding ceremony mm. which is a bit strange um that they skip that part mm -hmm. but maybe not um barbara says there seems to be something special about the bones of kings being buried around barton where lady dustin is from mm. really okay 
Okay, that's interesting, Barbara. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Well, what... they weren't they the original kings in the north? Yeah. The, the, in the barrel They lands. were the biggest uh, until the Starks put them down and yeah. they put a piece. And then it, the Boltons became like the biggest mm. pain in the arse for the Starks. <sighs> but, uh, yeah. I'm uncomfortable with my, I'm uncomfortable with the fray pie. I'm not saying the mm -hmm. phrase don't deserve it. I'm uncomfortable with the fray pie mm -hmm. on so many levels. I feel like we're all too like, yay, Manderly, and mm -hmm. I'm uncomfortable with it. Yeah, something's and not I, something's not right there. There will be consequences for that. There will so, be. Yeah. Some the way, other shape thing I just wanted to mention, because you know, she she obviously doesn't she's obviously legitimately bitter that cat took both stark men and mm. um, she got a she got to run up both of them and um, it made me also think about you know dustin going south all that guy i started thinking about terror of joy and we we commonly assume that if r plus l equals j if um ned has been protecting john as a secret targaryen he has been doing so or he did so from the Baratheons uh, and from Robert in particular. Um, what if he was protecting John from the Tullys? I feel like I think he could have talked Robert around to. I feel I, I don't I think it's too easy to say, oh, Robert would have killed him. I'm not sure. I don't know. He doesn't look like a targ. He never looked like a targ. Uh, the Tullys, on the other hand, they like that's pretty like Dustin is legitimately right to be like, like Ned should have been mine, and Kat could have got bloody Brandon, and then she managed to get my guy again. Like, how does how did they get that again? Like, it seems like the Tullys, and it was the Maester who set it all up, and you know, yeah, yeah, there seemed to be some sort of network of Meisters that are influencing the Illuminati lords at the time yeah and yeah it's it's i don't know we talked a lot about hoster tully we are not hoster tully fans um but i've just been thinking about it. i don't really have any reason why yet formulated in my head but the tullies have been very instrumental in history in very subtle but very pivotal ways and it could be that it was more to do with Hoster Tully or as much to do with Hoster Tully as well as with Robert Baratheon, that there's no way he could have kept John safe. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm talking out of my bum as usual. Um, so uh, AU says, Barrow Whites are part of the story uh, he took from Tolkien. Oh, really? Okay. Um, Barbara said, Ned mentioned them to Robert on the way to King's Landing. Don't remember, but it was something about the old kings being in the Barrow Hills. Oh, that's right. We mentioned that actually when we when we did that. That's right. Thanks for the reminder, Barbara. Um, there's all sorts of ways in which, you know, the Targaryens burn their dead. The, you know, some people bury them. And then we've got the Starks putting them in crypts. There's all sorts of ways in which, depending on what you do with your dead, it's very important to culture. I mean, that's kind of mirrored in our own culture as well, right? But um, yeah, that's all I have for this. My big question is, could Lord Dustin still be alive? Um, possibly, but I, I think he probably is dead and who she's actually mourning is Brandon. Some strange, twisted teenage relationship that she had with him and he was this all-powerful brute who I, I don't know i don't know but that's quite interesting about the burying the kings around baratown because if they're not sealed in yeah. like the starks are with the with the um you know the symbolic um well, we Crypt could have a sword, spiritual then. resurrection and a physical resurrection. <clears throat> Maybe she could, the kings could yeah. battle it out again in the north. That would be interesting. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm not sure what to make of her. 
but no, um, I, I, I kind of feel as though I instinctively like her. I do too. And, yeah, <laughs> and I do like the fact that she's made us all go, "Yeah, oh my God, why have we not thought that about the Meisters before? They're in such a powerful position and could manipulate communication so easily." Of course, that's ripe for corruption, and you know, it. it, it so I like her just for that reason. If nothing I think else, I kind of feel sorry for her. She's uh, very uh, much, she feels isolated. I don't think she's part of this Grand Northern conspiracy yet. No. And I think she will do whatever she needs to do for the good of mm. the North. Mm -hmm. I think she will be the one that will go, listen, I'm not going to start eating people in pies. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to we need to we have a big yeah. threat here yeah yeah and yeah. maybe you're right au maybe brandon said listen there's a reason why the swords should stay where they they are yeah um could be it um but yeah that's all i have um mm -hmm. next week we are the king's prize to the ghost in winterfell so another great joy sandwich um yeah. oh, asha's back i missed asha so i'm looking forward to that and uh yeah so Sarah. Got Aria next week. Yeah. Is it? I didn't yeah. write down what's coming in between, so that's great. So we've Aria got then. we've got a Danny chapter, a John chapter, and the blind girl. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Um what else do we say? Oh, uh, AU said Barrows buried them like the Rowan, and Connie says, and poison whoever they want, maybe like Hoster Tully. Mm. Yeah, and his bloody maester. Yeah. But uh, okay, folks, thank you so much. Have a great rest of the week. And thank you, Claire. You're welcome. See you next Sunday, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye.